The matter that brought me to the floor has a link to cybersecurity, and that is, if you will, energy security. And I want to talk about one of the new exciting technologies that's resulting in the production of many, many homegrown electrons, and that's wind power. And Madam President, I've come to the floor on a daily basis to urge my colleagues to work with me to extend the production tax credit for wind. The PTC has created literally tens of thousands of jobs across our country and has the potential to create even more. But if Congress, and that's us, that's the Senate and that's the House, doesn't act to extend it, tens of thousands of jobs literally will be lost. I know the presiding officer has a robust wind energy sector in her state, and she knows the, the extent to which it's important to business in the great state of New Hampshire. It's important to the businesses in every state in our country. It's an investment in a clean energy future, the production tax credit is. It's a critical investment in American jobs, and frankly, we're about to lose that investment. And I uh, uh, fear, in fact, that we've continued uh, through an inaction to, have, to create real harm to our uh, wind industry here in America. But it's not too late to act, Madam President. So today I'm going to focus my remarks on Idaho, a state that's known for its wide open spaces, its mountains, its potatoes, uh, for great friendly people. You don't have to look any further than Senator Crapo and Senator Risch to know that the people of Idaho are very, very good people. Idaho is a state with a vast potential vast untapped potential for wind energy. The National Renewable Energy Laboratory, which we host in Colorado, has calculated that Idaho's wind resources could potentially provide more than 218 percent of Idaho's electricity needs. It ranks 23rd in our nation's wind resource potential. Now, most of this potential is on the high plains of the southern half of the state. And I have to tell you that Idaho is already working to take advantage of what's a bountiful resource. There are more than 20 separate wind projects either online or under construction across the state. And if you look, uh, Madam President, in southeastern Utah near Twin Falls, here the uh, Wolverine Creek Wind Farm, in Invenergy's project, it covers about 5,000 acres and it pays royalties to almost 30 different uh, landowners. Uh, in 2011, Idaho's installed wind capacity grew by nearly 75 percent. That growth created hundreds of temporary construction jobs as well as permanent jobs in operation and maintenance of these facilities. Another number, right now Idaho's wind resources, resources provide power for nearly 160,000 homes without releasing the nearly 1.1 million metric tons of carbon dioxide that traditional power sources would. Wind supports close to 500 jobs in the state of Idaho, jobs that wouldn't exist if the wind industry had not been enticed to invest in Idaho because of the production tax credit, the PTC. And wind energy projects are an investment in local and state economies. Wind energy producers provide nearly $2.5 million to the state in property tax payments every year and over $2 million annually in land lease payments to local Idahoans who go on and invest that money back into their local communities. Those are real dollars that these communities count on. Madam President, the point I'm trying to make is that we in the Congress should be working to help create more projects like Wolverine Creek for the jobs and the clean energy that they create. But instead, the Congress is standing idly by. And then, Madam President, I can't help but uh, mention that there have been some on the campaign trail who've suggested that we should let the wind production tax credit lapse at the end of this year and that wind power should not be given the same help that other industries have received. I could not disagree more. Great states like Idaho and Colorado and New Hampshire make things. Great countries like the United States generate their own energy. Letting the wind production tax credit lapse would be irresponsible. The PTC equals jobs. We should pass it as soon as possible. We should not waver, and we should not wait. Every day that we let this unanswered question hang over our country, Madam President, 
may be another project and another job that gets shipped overseas. I urge my colleagues to work with me to support manufacturing in rural communities right here in America. Let's extend the production tax credit as soon as possible. It's common sense. It has bipartisan support. Let's extend the production tax credit. Madam President, I'll be back tomorrow to continue this discussion and talk about another one of our great states. I'm at 13 states. I'm going to keep coming back until we get this right.